What's poppin' my peeps, how's it going? My name is Burke Cullinane, and today I'm gonna show you this really cool transition that I love to do. I don't really know what it's called, maybe like a 360 rotating camera transition? It's, it's this thing right here. <laughs> All right, let's get it going. <laughs> So I'm gonna use my old Canon T3i as a prop to show you guys how I do this. So when I'm doing this effect, I shoot at 120 frames per second, and I would recommend shooting at a higher frame rate when you do this, whether it's 30, 60, 120 frames, whatever. You can shoot it at 24, just make sure you're shooting as smooth as possible when you do this transition. So when grabbing your first shot, what you're gonna wanna do is set up your shot and start filming. Once you've started filming and you feel comfortable with the shot that you've got, you're gonna rotate your camera clockwise. Now, shot number two is actually reversed in post. So you're gonna be shooting it very similar to how you shot the first one. The only thing that's different is when you rotate the camera out of the shot, you're gonna rotate it counterclockwise. So for example, if I had my shot, I was filming for about five seconds, I got what I needed, I would rotate the camera counterclockwise. I feel like it's been a while since I filmed in here. So I'll be editing this sequence in Premiere Pro, but as long as your software has the ability to speed ramp and reverse a clip, you'll be good to go. So I'm in my project here, already got my sequence lined up and the clips are already imported. Since I did shoot them at 120 frames, I do have to interpret them down. So I'm just gonna select both my clips, right click and click modify, interpret footage, and then come down here to assume this frame rate and change it to 23.976. All right, so with my first clip here, I already found where I'm gonna use it, but basically what I did is I found the point from where the transition starts to happen and I go back a few seconds. Now that I have that down here, I'm gonna drag that down to the timeline. I'm gonna unlink the audio from the video. By doing that, I can right click and hit unlink, or I can click Command L and automatically unlink the footage on my timeline. So one thing I wanna mention is that typically, this is something that you should be editing to music. If this is in some sort of cinematic sequence, you should be editing to the beat of the music. We're not gonna do that right now because we're not using any music. I'm just demonstrating how I do this technique. Now something that I like to do is I like to use warp stabilizer on a lot of my clips. It just smooths everything out. So I'm gonna come over to my effects bin here, go to warp stabilizer, drag that over to my clip, go to my effects controls on my clip, and change the smoothness to about 5%. And then click analyze, and then wait for it to analyze. While we're waiting for that to analyze, I will go back into my project bin and grab my other clip. So for this part, all you're gonna wanna do is find where that rotation ends. So for me, the rotation ends right about there. So I'm gonna put an out point and just drag it onto my timeline. Unlink the footage again. Now here's where I'm gonna reverse this clip. So you can do that by right clicking, go to speed duration, and then click reverse speed. Another little trick is if you hit Command R on your keyboard, it will bring up the speed duration. So now that the clip has been reversed, if we watch it back, we can see that it rotates in. So there's a couple things that I'm going to want to do. The first thing is I'm going to want to apply Warp Stabilizer onto this clip as well. But since the clip is reversed, Warp Stabilizer won't allow me to add it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my clip, right click, and click Nest. All this is gonna do is make a subsequence for that clip so that it will allow me to add warp stabilizer to it. Do the same thing, come over to effects controls, change the smoothness to 5%. While we wait for that to analyze, I'm gonna keyframe the speed ramping for our first clip. Now, since there's warp stabilizer on this clip, we actually can't speed ramp it, so we're gonna have to nest this clip as well. So you do that by right clicking, click nest, and we'll call this rotate one. So we're gonna come over here, right click on our effects, go to time remapping and speed, so I'm gonna play my clip, and once it starts rotating, I'll pause it right there. I can hit P on my keyboard or come over here and select the pen tool, and set a keyframe by clicking on this white line. Now that I've done that, I wanna select my cursor by coming over here or hitting V on my keyboard, and the white line that is after my keyframe, I'm gonna wanna drag up to 500%. Now something that's really cool is if you zoom into your timeline here, you can actually select this keyframe and drag it out so it eases into the clip. Now I'm not gonna use this whole rotation, so I'm gonna cut it right about, right about here when it's probably almost at its 180 degree mark. So for our second clip, we've reversed it, we've already nested it, we've applied warp stabilizer, and we're actually gonna have to nest it again. And the reason that we have to do that is because we can't speed ramp a clip that has warp stabilizer on it. So again, right click your clip, select nest, and we'll name this rotate two. Now we just need to fill in that gap. 
Boop. Now for this shot, we're actually going to apply the speed ramp to the beginning of the clip. So again, come over here, right clip your effects, change it to time remapping and speed. We can hit P on our keyboard or come over here for the pen tool. Find where your transition lands, place your keyframe down. Now change it back to your cursor by hitting V on your keyboard or coming over here. Drag the white line before the keyframe up to 500%. Zoom in on our timeline and we can add the ease. Now let's play that back. Dope. So now from here, I would actually add some sound design. So I have some sound effects right here. I have a river loop, which I'm gonna use. And then I have a little swooshy guy that I wanna use as well. Now let's watch that clip with some sound design on. Now, as far as speeding it up 500%, you don't have to do that. If you're doing 60 frames, it's actually gonna be 250%, but if you want it to go slower or faster, that is solely dependent on how you want the transition to feel. All right, everybody, if you like this video, hit that like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you aren't already, ring that bell, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Wow.